Welcome to Computer Science 320 2015 Winter 1's Midterm 1 Practice Problems. We're on Problem 1, Part 3. So, we are supposed to give and briefly justify a good omega bound on the runtime of this algorithm in terms of n. And as we talked about in the previous problem, we don't have to say best case or worst case here because the best case and the worst case are the same. There's only one case given a particular problem size. We're going to have a particular length of time that this takes. Now, if we want a good omega bound, this isn't really a technical term here. When we're talking about a good omega bound here, we're talking about one, ideally, that is as tight as it can be while still being a reasonable function. And the reason why we need to say that here is this algorithm does kind of crazy stuff. Anytime the array length is divisible by four, we end up making a recursive call, but when the array length is not divisible by four, we're going to stop the algorithm right away in constant time. So there's actually an infinite number of inputs, an infinite number of inputs of different sizes, where this algorithm just takes constant time. If you have a billion and one elements in your array, the algorithm takes constant time. If you have a trillion and one elements in your array, the algorithm takes constant time. So if we were to actually graph out this runtime, it's going to look really weird. There's going to be these, these many, many cases where the length of the array is not divisible by four, and they're all going to take constant time. We're going to see like a horizontal line in our graph, which is most cases. And then there will be these rare cases that take more time. And how long will those rare cases take? Well, we haven't really figured that out yet. But it's not clear that they're very relevant to the lower bound. In fact, it's clear that they're not. A good lower bound is not going to be a function that looks like some weird spiky hedgehog thing. It's going to be an easy to describe function. And the only easy to describe function that's going to lower bound this thing that keeps coming back over and over again to constant time is constant time. So we can say our omega bound is omega 1, constant time. And we can say that the reason why is because for any input of length not divisible by 4, the runtime is constant. Now that mostly justifies our omega bound. We should really also say it's never less than constant, but that doesn't happen with real algorithms anyway. I'm going to talk through it because let's say our lower bound were linear instead. We would want to say that, oh, and it's never less than linear in some infinite set of other cases. In this case, the alternative is that we go into the else, and the else clearly takes at least constant time. We have to divide the array up into pieces, we have to perform an addition, we have to return, and so on and so forth, and it actually potentially takes more than constant time. So that's our best bound, omega 1. Can't do any better than that. That completes this problem, and next we'll move on to the next part.